כל פאקינג מצלמה בגובה אחר בשביל לבלבל את הגויים או משהו. מה קורה פה? So, we, this, is a, this is our second Joker video, the Todd Phillips movie. Why does society shun the mentally ill? Can you please stop bothering my kid? You're a therapist. Mm -hmm. Please, tell us. Okay. Uh, we feel uncomfortable because mentally ill people f have relational problems. Uh, problems interacting. Problems interacting. Yeah, we all have some kind of relational problems, of yeah. course. Uh, but today we can look at mental illnesses from a certain perspective as stemming from early relational difficulties. A and those uh, problems are reenacted as a kind of a repetition compulsion in okay. future uh, patterns. And that's where they come across us, right? That's where they come across other people mm -hmm. with all this kind of relational baggage in their relationship. Okay. Of course, we have also relational baggage, but to different degrees. Why are we so uncomfortable with the mentally ill? Why can't we deal with it like we, deal, like we do with other kind of uh, li limitations people have? Let's look at Joker's case, for example. What is so hard for us is that we feel his very intense neediness for right. other people. I mean, he is very much, he needs, he's so starving. That makes us respond in many, many ways. Yes. And, and now we're going to talk about why it's so difficult to see that kind of neediness. I mean, we're all very needy. We all need other people. We. We as <laughs> we. We. <laughs> yes. No, but people, we need other people. I mean, yes. it's also like a neurological, uh, yes. physiological thing. Yes. We're mammals. Yes, and empirically proven that people are happier when they have good interactions yeah. in their community. With good interactions in their community, that we need, uh, you know, we need lots of hugs a day, we need lots of cuddling. Hug time! I mean, we're mammals, that's what we do, you know. Okay. <laughs> we cuddle, we need the oxytocin, we need all right. the serotonin, all those uh, great things that are uh, yeah. secreted when we are with people and we're having fun with oh. people and this and that. And that's why it's a tragedy when we can't create those kinds of relationships with others. But the, the thing is that when a person is mental, I mean, of course, there are different kinds of mental illnesses, so many different uh, manifestations okay. of it. But uh, uh, when a person is extremely needy, like in a pathological way, because yes. they were so starved in their life, you yes. know, it's, so it's draining. It's draining. And this is where, uh, you know, the whole metaphor of the breast, for example, comes in. It's as if we f they feel like we, the, the, you know, the normative people, let's say, we have this, kind of, this really good milk, this really good thing to feed them and to give them their attention and you know, all the things that uh, they need so badly because they're starving. But we feel like they might be so starving that they could drain us, like you say. Yes. Like they, they could take the, all the milk out. They, nothing will be left of us. Right. And then it feels like we have to erase ourselves, our own subjectivity and to submit to their need, yes. because we know that there is no recipro reciprocity yes. there. Yes, there's no nourishment. No nourishment from their side. It's one-sided thing, because they are unable, they don't have it, they're starving. How can they feed us right. when they're so starving? Right. And we want to be fed also. Yeah. And yeah, so if we you have a friend that is uh, sad for some time and needs more attention, yeah. then that's fine. Exactly. But you can sense the pathological need, as you mentioned, after a few interactions, you see, okay, this is how it's going to be every single time. Yeah. And uh, from uh, these kinds of people that I know that have all these kinds of conditions, uh, sometimes you just like, okay, I'll back off. I don't want any interaction mm -hmm. because I know that every interaction will not be to my liking forever and ever and ever. Mm -hmm. It's like, it, it's, it's like a, a hole with no end, is whatever is a Hebrew expression. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and, and this is exactly what happens. I mean, with Happy, he doesn't, he doesn't make people want to give to him. But sometimes what happens is that there are people who have the capacity, which is a very healthy thing. They have the capacity to uh, and make people empathize with them, at least initially. And what happens many times is that uh, 
like you say, you start interacting with someone like that because you feel like you don't know them that well and you feel like they're truly in distress right. and, and you, you want to be a yeah. good object, you know, yeah. to give them... you enjoy the, being useful. You enjoy being useful, you enjoy being recognized for being a good person and this and that, which is a good thing. Yes. Like, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not to get, you know, this, there's the whole discussion of altruism versus egoism. I say it's great that we feel great when we give well, other obviously people. Obviously, it's incredible. It's incredible. It's one of the best things that we have as humans. Yes. Let's hold on to that. Let's hold on to that, exactly. But what happens after a while uh, is that you start feeling like maybe there are too many dramas, right? Like increasing, I mean, just the dra dramas never stop. All I have are negative thoughts. Or that you don't have room to give your own input or to yeah. tell about your own life. Yeah. It's just Happy, about them. He's not interested in listening to other people's problems uh -huh. and yeah. maybe helping them out or something. He's not interested in other people at all. Yeah, yeah. He, he imagines uh, what his mom is and what uh, this Murray uh, fellow is and what uh, Wayne Senior is, mm -hmm. but none of, the, none of these imaginations have anything to do with reality. And when he goes and he imagines that he meets uh, De Niro Murray, he's not uh, imagining uh, Murray asking him for advice, maybe sharing his problems, yeah. unloading with him. No, it's just like always superficial and what I need. Also, uh, when he fantasizes, when he has this kind of delusional, uh, well, I mean, uh, hallucinatory maybe, also relationship with the, with the neighbor. I mean, it's not as if he's saying, yeah, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna help her, she's a single yeah. mom, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. Yeah. It's, uh, she will come to my show, she will support me with my yes. mom. Yeah. I mean, it's really very yeah. one-sided because he, he can't, I mean, he's not available for that. He can't mentalize the other when he's so much in distress himself all the time. Right. But, but that as the other, right, as the other person, that can be very threatening. And also, I mean, we can start off feeling recognized for our good parts and, oh, we're such good listeners. But then at one point, we also feel unrecognized as subjects because it's people that are so needy, and again, we're all needy, but you know, people who are so needy because they really have no nourishment at all, then it's like a beggar, you know, they, they will eat anything and uh, uh, they will eat, uh, you, you know, to survive, you know, they will eat leftovers, they will yeah. eat from trash cans. And, and at one point you feel like that person that you're talking to, I mean, they don't relate to you as a subject. You could be anyone else. Anyone. And you will and, be somebody else when they move someone, on. Exactly. And, we can, and, and also, you know, the, like the healthy thing, I mean, we show our neediness to the people that are closer to us. At first, we start off, you know, cooler, you yeah. know. And then when, they, when we get closer to them and we yeah. feel safer, then we feel like we can show our neediness. They show our neediness immediately. Uh, think about the scene where he talks to the clerk. Right uh, in the mental hospital mm. when he tries to get out, uh, yeah. you know, his mother's records. What? Immediately he opens up to him. He says, "I did this. I did that." And he tells him, "Look, you have to talk to someone. I'm just right. a clerk." Uh, but this is exactly what happens. I mean, yeah. you don't distinguish between when it's appropriate, when right. it isn't, to, to show the neediness. To show. Someone looks at you and you're like, "Wow," you know, yeah. because you're so hungry. I right. mean, it's not from a, a bad place, of course. It's right. from this kind of incredible need that we can all relate to but we can you know it's so big that we feel intimidated by it we feel like they can swallow us yes and it's not us we're just you know objects we're just food it's not nothing has to do with our own specialness our own uniqueness right. and we need that as people in right. relationships okay so what do you what's uh, what's like the, the advice uh, in dealing with uh, people with uh, these kinds of uh, mental illness what's what's the, the best course of action because we also there are some kind of people who have some kind of vibe in them that just like creates uh, and harps on our aggressions like makes us mm -hmm. uh, feel aggressive happy has that yeah. a ton people are bullies all the time to him so it could be that everybody's a bully or it, it could also be that there's something in these interactions that he kind of uh, for like I'm, I'm putting this in uh, several quotations he's begging for it like there's yeah. something that he brings to every single every single uh, interaction and that's also, it, it creates uh, violent interactions, aggressive interactions, but also it's just like not pleasant to be around that kind of uh, energy. So what yeah. do we do? What do we do? We don't want to be assholes. No. I mean, uh, th it happens because of the repetition compulsion thing, because there's like a counter transference, you know, he makes us 
uh, participate in the inner dramas that he knows, like he, he, has, he was abused in the past and he keeps recreating that, that happens all the time. But it's really also the fact that we feel the stress around him and then we react in like fight, fi flight or, uh, you know, freeze reactions. Uh, and that also can, uh, you know, arouse uh, aggressive uh, behaviors or like people just walking away and stuff, ignoring him, which is also painful. Can you please stop bothering my kid? Sorry. Because I have experience in that, also as a, as a person in the world, because I have that kind yeah. of face, people, to <laughs> <laughs> people uh, keep walking up to me and talking to me, but also, you know, as part of my professional work. And that's uh, very vain of you. Oh, <laughs> that people talk to me all the <laughs> yeah. time because I have that yeah. face. No, because I look, look non-threatening and it's true. I'm not a, an aggressive person. So some people, you know, they feel like they can, uh, yeah, they can, they can trust me, yeah. which is not low risk, <laughs> low yeah. risk, low risk person. Right. And of course, many people might share that kind of feeling uh, okay. in the world. You have to understand that sometimes when you're nice to people uh, in that sense, like when you allow them to open up to you, then when you turn away and at some point you will, because you will never give them the amount of attention that they need because of what we just said, they will feel dropped again and you will recreate what they're already feeling in their lives and they have been feeling, you know, maybe from since they can remember themselves. So when you, when you think that you're helping someone, in fact, you might be recreating the trauma, re-traumatizing them just by being nice and then walking away because they will never get what they want from you. Or you can, you know, or you will find yourself in unbearable situations. Yeah. It's not their fault. It's not your fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the way things yeah, I've are. Seen, I've seen that she go down. Where I live, there's a ton of people on these kinds of spectrums. And it just creates more disappointment, more feelings of neglect. And, you know, yeah. they so, just don't understand. They feel like, uh, I mean... So what should we do? I, I, when people like that approach me, I never go into personal details. I never let them talk about themselves and open up and be in that kind of ver very vulnerable state before in front of me because I know that I can't... I can't be there for them. I recommend going to therapy and in therapy it's different. I mean as a therapist I can say okay. that the, the fact that the relationship is asymmetrical is very helpful in that sense because you don't expect the kind of reciprocity that you would expect a personal relationship. So right. and, the, and, and the other person will be 100% available for you or exactly. as much as humanly possible unlike well, the people out there. Yeah, but it's also 100% available in a certain setting, which Boom. also makes the, the, the therapist... There's a time limit. There's a time limit. You can bear this kind of intensity. Mm. You can be, you know, you can give, you can be open to that. I mean, uh, not, I mean, of course, there are limitations for us as people, yeah. both therapists and patients, but uh, th uh, the kind of uh, treatment that they get is much more valuable than they will with other people. And the hope is that with that kind of like, I mean, they get some nourishment, they get some evacuation of the things yeah. that are troubling them, and, and then they will be more open in time, of course, it depends on the yeah. severe, you know, yeah. severe. But at least we can see in the movie that when he doesn't get, the, the, when he doesn't have the therapy anymore, this outlet, yeah. then that's also like a marker for when uh, things yeah. start to go exactly. astray. He, I mean, also the therapy that he got, we saw, wasn't that great in the sense that he never felt heard, he never felt, right. you know. This is the last time we'll be meeting. You don't listen, do you? He just asked the same questions every week. So uh, Wayne Senior, mm -hmm. he's like the the oligarch, whatever billionaire, who wants maybe to cut uh, social services and doesn't think that this kind of uh, policy affects him. He wants to ca maybe cut his own taxes and also now wants to be like the mayor. But by the end of the movie, this neglect comes to bite you in the ass and you get murdered in the alley. Exactly. I mean, this is a part of the, you know, the good points that people make, how taking care of people is for the greater good. I mean, uh, this is, I mean, really having those kinds of infrastructure, social... Uh, yeah. yeah. And why not? Just like for so many reasons. <laughs> Okay, that, that was very, very interesting. Thank you, Noga. Boom. If you want to watch uh, our first uh, video about uh, Joker and psychoanalyzing him, then uh, the, li the, the link is here or here.
either of the two. And also we have a podcast uh, about the masses in uh, the Joker. So uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed it. And if you did, then uh, hit like and share with your friends. And thank you, patrons, for supporting the channel. And thank you to Noga for that as well and for being awesome. So thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Got Academy is sponsored by our patrons.